Hello and welcome to the fifth video in the A-Level Biology series. Today we are going to be covering infectious diseases, how they are transmitted and how we can control them, including the use of antibiotics and the instance of antibiotic resistance. The term disease is used to describe the disorder of structure and function which negatively affects an organism and produces specific symptoms. Infectious diseases are caused by a pathogen and are transmissible between infected and healthy individuals. Non-infectious disease describes long-term or chronic degenerative disease which are not caused by pathogens. For example, cancers, inherited or genetic disease, autoimmune or deficiency diseases caused by malnutrition. Infectious diseases are caused by different types of pathogens such as bacteria, fungi, viruses, and plasmodia parasites. Today we are going to discuss a few of these types of pathogen with some specific examples of disease with focus on their cause, transmission, and treatment. Cholera can be a mild or severe infection affecting the small intestine. Cholera is caused by a waterborne bacterium called Vibrio cholerae. The bacteria produces a toxin, cholerogen, or CTX. CTX interferes with sodium and chloride ion flow in the intestine, leading to the rapid loss of salts and fluids. The infection can cause severe diarrhea, dehydration, low blood pressure, thirst, and muscle cramping. As the cholera bacteria is waterborne and is egested through feces, it can infect humans through drinking contaminated water or eating contaminated food. The transmission of cholera is more likely to occur in areas with poor sanitation and hygiene, such as poorer areas with inadequate water treatment and shared washing and drinking facilities. Methods to control and prevent cholera spread are through adequate sewage treatment, chlorination of water supply to kill bacteria, and vaccination in endemic areas. However, the disease is still difficult to control due to the fast-growing, population-dense and developing countries not having appropriate infrastructure and funding for drainage and sewage treatment. Areas in war or conflict are often hardest hit due to the loss or damage to the infrastructure. Malaria is a serious and often fatal disease caused by unicellular parasite called plasmodium. Five species of plasmodium can infect and be spread by humans. The most common is plasmodium falciparum. Plasmodium cells infect red blood cells and travel to the liver where they infect liver cells and multiply within the cells leading to the destruction of the liver. Symptoms of the disease include high fevers, shaking chills, vomiting, headaches and flu-like symptoms. In serious cases it can cause seizures, coma or death. The plasmodium parasite is carried by the insect vector, the Anopheles mosquito. Female Anopheles feed on human blood to acquire proteins required for her egg development. If the person is already infected by the parasite, she can take up the parasite in her blood feed and pass it on to the next person she visits. The methods to control malaria are to reduce the numbers of Anopheles mosquitoes in an area by interfering with their reproduction, such as draining marshes or small pools of water in which mosquitoes lay their eggs. However, this is difficult as they can lay eggs in small pools of water. Usually reducing the chance of being bitten works well, such as installing mosquito nets, using insect repellents and insecticides. Human Immunodeficiency Virus, or HIV. HIV infects and eventually destroys the immune system of its host, initially causing flu-like symptoms. 
which escalate once the damage to the immune system is severe. Due to the inability to fight disease, patients often die from opportunistic infections such as pneumonia and tuberculosis due to being unable to trigger immune response. At this stage, the patient has acquired immunodeficiency disorder, or AIDS. HIV is caused by a retrovirus. This means the virus can insert its own RNA, or genetic material, into the host's DNA and replicate within the cell. The virus uses the host's own cellular machinery to synthesize proteins and replicate their DNA, producing multiple copies of itself, which then burst out of the cell and on to infect other cells. This virus can also remain dormant in the host cells for many years without causing symptoms. This is known as the latent stage of the disease. The virus can be spread from person to person through exchange of bodily fluids, such as in unprotected sex, contaminated blood, hypodermic needle sharing, and from mother to baby through placenta and breast milk. HIV can be difficult to prevent due to the long latent stage of infection in which a person can transmit unknowingly due to not showing any signs or being aware of the disease. The disease can be prevented by screening blood for blood transfusions, education, so teaching about the dangers of sharing needles and unprotected sex, condoms and femidoms to create a physical barrier between bodily fluids. Post-exposure prophylactic drugs can be used soon after expected exposure to prevent infection. The use of antiretroviral drugs are successful in preventing the replication of the virus inside of the body. Antibiotics are selective drugs which act to target and kill or halt the growth of bacteria without inflicting any damage to the host's own cells. Common antibiotic targets are cell wall synthesis, specific bacterial protein activity, for example in the cell membrane, enzymes, bacterial DNA synthesis, and bacterial protein synthesis. Penicillin are a group of antibiotics which were originally isolated from the penicillium species of fungi or mould. Now these types of antibiotics can be synthesised in the laboratory. Penicillin inhibits the cross-linking of peptidoglycans, a bacteria-specific peptide sugar found in the bacterial cell wall. In normal bacterial growth, the cell wall must expand for the cells to divide. To do this, the bacterial cell secretes enzymes called autolysins, which create small holes in the cell wall. These holes allow for the cell wall to stretch and then the holes are filled by the enzyme-catalyzed cross-linking of peptidoglycans. Penicillin inhibits the enzymes which catalyze this cross-linking. However, the autolysins are still secreted, creating holes in the cell walls which are not repaired. This leads to the cell wall of the bacteria becoming weaker. This also leads to an increase of water flow into the cells, increasing internal pressure within the cell, eventually leading to the bursting or lysis of the cell. Unfortunately, antibiotics do not work on viruses as they do not have cells or cell walls. They also use the host's own cellular machinery to replicate, which makes them difficult targets for drugs. Antibiotic resistance is becoming increasingly prevalent. Bacterial species are highly diverse, with genetic variation occurring within individuals of the same bacterial species or strains. Chance mutations in bacterial DNA can cause bacteria to become resistant to antibiotics. 
Antibiotic resistant bacteria can continue to grow without competition from non-resistant bacteria after treatment. Therefore, the genes which infer resistance are passed on to the next generation with greater frequency. This is known as evolution by natural selection. Eventually, the whole population of bacteria becomes antibiotic resistant because they are better suited to that environment, also known as survival of the fittest. Some bacteria have developed resistance to penicillin, such as MRSA, which produces an enzyme called beta-lactamase, which breaks down penicillin. There are two methods of passing on antibiotic resistance in bacteria. Number one, vertical transmission. And number two, horizontal transmission. Vertical transmission is when bacteria divide asexually by binary fission. The bacterial chromosome is replicated within the cell and the bacteria divides into two daughter cells. Each cell contains an identical copy of the chromosome. This type of reproduction is rapid, occurring every 20 minutes. Therefore, if one bacterium contains the mutant gene, all descendants will have the mutant gene. Horizontal transmission can occur between two populations of the same species or between different species. Plasmids are small pieces of circular DNA within the bacterial cells, separate from the chromosome. These plasmids contain antibiotic resistant genes. Plasmids can be transferred between bacteria by horizontal transmission. Conjugation is when a small tube forms between two bacteria, allowing material to be transferred from one bacterium to another. This allows for the transfer of DNA from one bacteria to another. The bacteria receiving the DNA can synthesize a complementary strand, which will be identical. This type of transmission can confer multiple antibiotic resistances, resulting in superbugs such as methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, or MRSA. The overuse and incorrect use of antibiotics leads to the development of antibiotic resistance, such as using antibiotics for treating minor conditions, routine treatment for animals in agriculture, failing to finish a course of antibiotics can leave surviving bacteria behind. There are a few ways to reduce the impact of antibiotic resistance. Avoiding infection, maintaining good personal hygiene, hand washing, immunization, and safe food preparation. Improving antibiotic prescribing, so only when essential. Work on developing new drugs and antibiotics. As the process of developing antibiotic resistance is a natural process of evolution, it cannot be completely stopped, but we can act to slow it and adapt to it. So this concludes today's video on infectious diseases and antibiotics. Thank you for watching today's video. We hope to see you next week for the sixth video in the series, which will focus on immunity.